Everybody say hello to Jared again. Hi, Jared. Hi. We're on part two now that we've had our lunch. That was the one I missed. Miss Stample told me that you, she heard you, you that you heard me say penis. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for saying that again. We appreciate it. Why can't I find the wing of a roller? No, I already said it's it. It's like I just say wing of a roller. Would you stop it? <laughs> Yes, a blue roller is a bird that is only in Europe. And what I want to say about this piece, you know, <coughs> artists, um, they do studies <coughs> of human anatomy and things in nature. They do studies for themselves to, they're working on specific things, okay, trying to get something right. Obviously here, Gur is working on this wing. We got uh, feathers. The texture of feathers uh, is very specific, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Feathers look very different than like hair, human hair, and even horse hair. It looks very different. So what he's working on here is trying to get the texture of the <coughs> feathers very right. The feathers that are out here in the longer part of the wing out towards the outer part of the wing are even very much different than the inner inside feathers. These would be more downy type feathers, right? Mm -hmm. So he's working on trying to paint and get the texture right and the color right of this bird. Wouldn't you love to see a blue roller? Those look yeah. like beautiful yeah. birds, don't they? I've never seen one. I, yeah, I need cool. to look it up sometime and see what a blue roller looks like. But they're, in the past. they're only in Europe. But we, yeah, we'll have to look it up sometime. <laughs> I see a signature. They just yeah. keep yeah. hold on Captain. There he is. Signature right there. Uh, and yes, we can see both. And I did get this one. I just love the colors of this, you know. That is so pretty. It is really, really nice. But again, when you become a very famous artist, everything that you've ever done, I'm sorry if it's a scratch little heart, it becomes famous, right? So in his study, his nature studies, they're all famous. Whether you mean them to be these great works of art or not, it doesn't matter. Same thing with Da Vinci, his sketchbooks, you know, are all very famous. Uh, so whether he meant for this to be like the great work of art, it doesn't matter because he became a great artist <coughs> and so everything he ever did just looked at. Um, the next one we're going to look at of Durge is called the hare. Another perfect example of what I've talked about, a nature study, a rabbit. That's not a picture. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This one is actually uh, in my house also. This is in my bedroom. Why? Why not? I love drawers. Okay. <laughs> I do love drawers, so I've got a couple of his works at my house. I'm blowing my nose, Jared, so I don't know if you hear me or not. <laughs> Miss Hanks, did you hear about the guy? He, he bought a house. Nobody ever went and scoped it out or whatever, but he went and he bought it. And there was like $20 million worth of artwork in there. It was just you know, 1980 <coughs> artists or something. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was wow. All over the news. He didn't wow. know that they were famous, but he went in and restored them all, and then had people look at them. Yeah, they, they had them put in speakers and frames and glass over them. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And he spent... Do you know what artist it was? I can't remember his name. From the 1920s, did you say? I don't know. For sure. It, was, it, it wasn't probably... Like, they weren't, like, super old. They weren't, like, super, super old, but they were um, older. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
this is another woodcut. This is not in your packet, but I wanted to show it to you because this is just fantastic and it has full of detail. This would be in that Bible. Uh, it was not turned to that page for me to look at. This is Revelation. This is the four, the four, four the, horsemen. Yes, thank you. Can't get it out of my mouth, but you know what you're looking at. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the four horsemen of the apocalypse that you're looking is there at there. Right there on the bottom? Yes, it is. Okay. You're like, what would he use? Because that'd be like. I don't know. Whatever tools that, you know, I don't know. I can't tell you. I don't understand all this stuff. But fantastic, you know, right? Look at it. I mean, that would have been great enough just to draw on its own, right? But to know that it's a wood hat, it's ridiculous. Like, like the details in the horse's faces. <laughs> yeah. To be this detailed is pretty crazy. But the man was ultimately gifted, you know. To be this gifted... Like these guys are, is truly a, a gift from God. The this question is, where would you start? Melancholy. I know. What would you? That's what, what I want to know. Melancholy. Uh, melancholy is bad. Is that, yeah. Is that what it's meant to be? Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is probably the most famous of the wood <coughs> uh, for its detail. Is that the one that you have to see? Um, I saw so many of them, I don't, I mean, not in the Bible, no, this wasn't in the Bible, but I saw a lot at his house in Nuremberg, so, um, I'm trying to get one of those. It looks off. like how perfectly circled that ball is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's cut. I can't even get a perfect circle. With a pencil on the compass. <laughs> I can't do it with a compass. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's insane, isn't it? Look at this. The detail in this is just insane. I mean, like, look, wood kind of carves, I don't know, it just seems like it'd be hard to get all those angles and lines. It's so straight. So perfect. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Fantastic. Straight. His father was also in the, and did wood cutting and silver cutting and stuff. He wasn't a pet, he didn't paint, but he did a lot of this stuff. But uh, Albrecht will be, he'll be part of the, the talent of his dad. Okay, now this one is in your paint, your packet. This is uh, praying hands or the study of praying hands, either way. This is not a wood test. <laughs> it's on page two of your photo packet. These are also at the Sam Lung, so there's a, a lot of the Jewish stuff I have not seen because I haven't been to Vienna. The, you know, the originals. I mean, obviously they had copies in Nuremberg when I went to his house. His house is a museum, um, but the originals are not there. And this is one of the most copied examples of French hands <coughs> in the world today. Uh, we actually have a poster of it in our own library. Uh, you see the praying hands like this all the time. It comes from the juror. This is simply a study of hands, isn't it? An artist. He's studying hands. He wants to get uh, skin tone right here. Look at the blood vessels. You see the tendons of the hand, your knuckles. He's going to get those things right. Fingernails. Okay, the cuff of the sleeve here. So we're just studying hands. That literally is the a hardest study thing to draw ever. You know, I'm going to get them right. Not meant specifically for this particular piece to become famous, but because he became famous, it does, and it is copied. Uh, you know, the Oral Roberts University, the ginormous hand they have sticking up out of the ground over there, which you will scare the crap out of you, or uh, That's what we went for. Uh, inspire you. A class inspire you. And they had that, and all their buildings are just kind of different looking anyway. And I was so distracted, like, I just went around the college to look at the architecture and stuff. And then there's that giant flame up in the air. I was very distracted. Yeah, the architecture at uh, over you. I wanted to see yeah. the hands. That's, did I you not see them? I did. I was running around looking for them. In uh, Webster, or 
Yeah, Web City. Web City. Uh huh. That that's our like really horrible scene. Yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, sorry if your grandfather was the person who did that, but they're bad. Sorry. They're just well, they're not my They're not <laughs> anywhere near the <laughs> I just think they're really poorly done. I mean, I'm I'm sure whoever did obviously they had a good heart, you know, they're trying to do something wonderful, but for me, I mean this is what I grew up studying and looking at, and then I see those, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> and I know they had a good heart, they meant well, but it didn't come out right. <laughs> 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 I don't know, I say break that ball back and get started over again, okay? Huh? Okay, never mind. <laughs> That's what I I'm moving on, you know? All right, and here we go. The man himself, Albert Drew. That's what you're looking for in your info package on the first page. Yep. And it's on page 10 of your picture packet. First page on the info packet, 10 on the picture packet. So this is a sales portrait. It is in the Pentecostat Museum in Munich. No, it's Albert Durling. On the first page. It's on page 10. 10 of the picture packet. Yep. And as I told you earlier, he was regarded as the Leonardo of the North because of his extreme talent. And you know, people like this that have these kind of talents, um, I told you before, I really do think that they're blessed by God, right? I mean, this is a gift from God. I don't have it. Uh, even people who are talented, you know, we have a lot of people talented in the school, artistically, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't see any of them reaching this level. I mean, maybe they will, right? Could happen. Um, I've met some really uber-talented people in my time. The Denzers that have done some artwork for me and, and that did the two maps that uh, I usually show people when we're doing maps. But, you know, those are some pretty talented people, but still they don't reach the level of Michelangelo and Albert Drew and Leonardo da Vinci. This is a time period when the people who are born, the things that they achieve, we remember their names forever. You know? I want you to think about that for a minute. Right? Forever. And you can only say that about biblical people. Otherwise. Right? Jesus. Muhammad. Hitler. Gandhi. Okay? <laughs> Other than that, this time period is going to give birth to many people whose names are remembered. They'll be remembered forever. When, when you say Michelangelo, there are people all over the world who know exactly who you're talking about. All over the world. I don't care what color they are, what language they speak, they know who you're talking about. Exactly. When you say Leonardo, mm -hmm. some of them are smart actors and they say DiCaprio. Okay. But both of them, they just being smart as they say DiCaprio, they know you're talking about Da Vinci. If you just say Da Vinci, they know you're talking about Leonardo, right? Okay, these, this is a time period like that where people's extraordinary talents and the things that they accomplish and leave for us and God, they love for us, you know? Isn't that unbelievable? Think about that for a minute. Think about <coughs> your name. Sarah. <coughs> Sarah, if in 500 years... When man says the name Sarah, people know it's you. <coughs> I feel like you'd be confused about the Bible. So. Would that not be amazing, though? Okay. Think about that. In 500 years, when people say the name Sarah, they know it's you? Wow. That gives me chills to think about that. Well, what Sarah could accomplish? What is it that Sarah have, will have done that in 500 years we'll know that that's her? And that's what these people in the Renaissance have done. Their names will last forever. It's extraordinary. Now, da, Vin da Vinci, we always, he's like the measure, isn't he? The highest measure, right? So to compare someone with Da Vinci, that's pretty awesome, right? So we, we compare Drew to <coughs> Da Vinci here. We call him the Leonardo of the North. Now, who does this painting look like? Tell me what you're thinking. Who looks you think of Jesus, right? This is not an accident. 
Okay, now, now don't get confused because Burr is not trying to say he is Jesus. He's not that stupid. Uh, no, no, okay? He's probably stupid. thinking all of us are created in his image. Right. He is going to put himself in a Christ-like pose, though. Okay? Because he does recognize that his gifts and his talents have been given to him by the Lord. Okay? He does recognize that. But he's, he's careful not to be blasphemous and not make himself exactly Jesus. Okay, but put, he does put himself in a Christ-like pose. Okay? Does he have dreadlocks or does he just have really awesome curls? Yeah, really awesome, awesome curls. curls. So yeah. like How do you pronounce that name again? The Pentecostal. I'm trying to write you. Really, I wrote Muslim. <laughs> <laughs> I said Muslim. Yeah, I wrote Muslim. So let's get in a little bit closer here. We're going to look at this. See, <coughs> we're not going to make ourselves perfect. That's what kind of wood. Drew is no. Drew is not going to make himself perfect. Now you notice. Look at his face. Yeah. We don't okay. have perfection here, do we? One eye is bigger than the other. Eye. Right. And then one eye is way over the left a little bit more. Right. Right. We we have some imperfections. <laughs> The human imperfections that we all have. Yeah. I like how you can see like the strands of hair, like so, hair yeah. contrast and stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. So careful not to make himself disappear perfect, because then he felt like that would be blasphemous. Does put yourself in so he put his like eyes like that on purpose? Well, this is it, he doesn't he doesn't perfect imperfection. Okay. <laughs> Not on purpose, this is how he looks. So he doesn't fix himself. He's not going to, maybe he has an age spot here or something. You know, he isn't going to fix it. Because he felt like that would be wrong. That's wrong. A lot of artists will do that. They got a broken nose, they're going to fix it. They're going to show you that. Okay? He's not going to do that. He does put himself in this Christ like pose on purpose because he's, he's paying homage, this is how he sees it, to Christ. And saying thank you for giving me these talents. I wouldn't have gotten them only through you if I received these talents. And he knows that. Okay, this is not on his own. But he's not going to go so far as to show himself in perfection because then he felt like that it would be trying to show him as Christ and he's not doing that. That's not what he wanted to do. Alright, so we have some imperfections here. This is Dura as Dura was. Okay? Even get close up on his eye here. Now, this thing that's here is on the canvas, so don't get caught on that. That's what I was looking at. Right. So see, you have a little birthmark over here. Okay. He's got dark green on his eye. But you can't notice him far away from the camera. Right. Right. I like you to see the light in his eye. Right. That was cool. Okay, and this. Um, how, what's this age? Five, five. No, ten, twenty, five, twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Yes. Yeah. What he's saying here is, uh, I, Albert Durer, have painted myself in indelible colors at the age of twenty-eight. And in indelible colors? Mm -hmm. He looks a little bit older than twenty-eight in the picture mm -hmm. too. How do you explain? Tired. It always looks like older to me. Now, I forgot what you said. These two, because the painting is actually in both of these movies. Yeah. Yeah. That is. How many of you have seen the movie The Saint with Val Kilmer? I've never seen it, or I've seen parts of Dracula. Um, I've never, never seen The Saint with Val? Oh, my God. Is that on our list? Yeah, it probably is. I can't remember, but it should be. should be. Uh, uh, I don't know. It might not be. But The Saint with Val Kilmer, if you've never seen it, Val... I don't know how many different uh, characters he plays in that movie. I have to think on that. Yeah, he's <laughs> I know he's that. fantastic, though. This is Val at his height, and he looks so, so good. But he's great with characters. I don't know if you, if you know very much about Val Kilmer, but especially in the 80s, all these different kinds of characters. You've seen Simpson, well, other right? Has he played? Doc Holliday? Okay. Like you know, he plays this character so well with a little bit of an accent. Okay, in this movie, the second, he gets to play like 20 different characters, because that's who he is. He plays all these different characters. So he's trying to figure out, he needs to be this character because he's trying to steal something from this lady, and he's trying to get in her life a little bit, so he's trying to figure out who he needs to be. Well, he shows up at a lecture where she's going to be, because he thinks that she's a nurse. She's a, a doctor of science. 
Okay, so he thinks that she's older and a nurse. He's totally misread her. When he gets there, he finds out she's really, really young, very pretty, and he doesn't know anything about her. And he's like, oh, crap, because he's dressed up <laughs> as this really old <laughs> and he looks like an idiot. It's not going to work. You know, I mean, when he gets there, he's like, oh, crap. And so he breaks into her house, and he's trying to, you know, fill her out a little bit, see, learn some things about her, trying to figure out who she is so that he can get closer to her. So he's on her computer, and he's looking for things up, and he's looking around her house, and stuff, he's like, hmm. And he looks up to the left of her computer, and there's the Albert group. And, and he's putting together who he's going to be now. And, and he finally gets it right, trust me. He is scared that he goes up that was perfect. But he, he sees the painting in her house, okay? So you got to see the movie the same. That's perfect. In Dracula, what they do in Dracula, how many of you have seen Brom Circus Dracula? Just you, just you. Oh, my God, people. I watched three hands. I got three. I got three thumbs. I watched it when I was really little. Oh my god! Oh, I've seen it a million times. It's on the list. It's on the list. It's, it's on the list. It's on. I think it's on Netflix. I really do think it's on Netflix. Okay. It is. I'll start with Dracula. Okay, it's on the list. All right. What they did in uh, Dracula, I'll never forget when I first saw it. I was like, holy crap! I couldn't believe it. It was fantastic. Uh, when the, when uh, John Harker first goes into the castle and he comes in and Dracula meets him as the old, old man in the fantastically long red cape and the crazy, crazy ass white hair and it's fantastic. Um, he's having dinner with him. The scene where they're having dinner. And in the dinner hall there, he looks up at the painting and he says, is that a relative of yours that he sees a resemblance? That is Gary Oldman, the actor who plays Dracula, painted exactly as Albert Durer. It is totally the Albert Durer pose. Now, I've looked everywhere for years on the internet trying to get that, and you, you can't. I don't know if there's some sort of image you can write because it's not Albert Durer. It's a, they've changed it, you know, but it's Gary Oldman dressed up as Dracula, in the average of repose. It's fantastic. When I saw it in the movie, I was like, oh my God, he's so fantastic. It looks so good. They've done him exactly like that. So good. So if you ever watch Dracula, you've got to look for the painting twice there, but it is so, so good. So this is one of the ones, i got to go back now. I have to go back for a minute. Sorry. Back, people, back. 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 Got to go back. Why don't I have this like at the end here? I should. Okay, so this is the one that I have to tell you the story. That, you know, the list, the list of things I'm going to see before I die, you know, I said, I've got, now I have to go to Milan and Brussels and Amsterdam. Okay, well, because I've been to Munich, finally, and this is on my list. My son wanted to go to Germany. Uh, my sister lives in Bavaria, and we were flying into Munich. And, you know, I said, okay, this is on the list of going to the tennis coach. Okay. She's like, okay. So when we flow, flew into Germany, she picked us up, and it was morning time, and we actually drove about two hours out of Germany because that after that evening and stuff, we went to this huge medieval fair. Okay, now you think we have Renaissance fairs and they're cool? <laughs> Try being in Germany. These actually are. I think you told us <laughs> You know, the people, you know. Did I tell you about I think being in this tank? Uh, no, you have to tell us. You're doing the history. Okay, because I don't want to tell the story twice. I sure don't. Not this one, anyway. But, yeah, so we, we go out to the fair and stuff, and it was the next morning when I wake up, and we're, we're two hours outside of Munich. The next morning when I wake up, and I'm thinking that my, my lip feels weird, but I don't pay attention, right? And um, go to the bathroom, and my sister's already in the kitchen, you know, because we've rented this little house. And I go in the kitchen, and, um, oh, I looked in, I did look in the mirror. I did look in the mirror before I left the bathroom. And I am telling y'all right now, when I looked in the mirror, I was like, because I was so sexy. Ooh, y'all don't even know. I looked like Angelina Jolie. Okay, I had oh some my. sexy lips going on, okay? I don't know where they came from, but they weren't mine. 
So I was like, whoa, girl, pray it. Look at you, girl. Woo! <laughs> I came out of there and I went into the kitchen and Mary's like, oh my God. Now I haven't spoken yet, okay? And now for the first time I speak and my voice is not right. I'm like, what the heck? What just came out? It wasn't me, you know? And uh, she's like, she is freaking out, okay, because this is my sister. She is completely a hypochondriac, and I mean, totally. She immediately says that I have, <laughs> I have swallowed a spider in the middle of the night, and that it's bit me inside the mouth. Okay, that's what she says this happened. I did. I looked at her, I said, oh my God, only somebody from the South would say such a thing. Some Nazi-ass spider has bit me in the mouth. Are you kidding me? You know, and she's like, no, look at, you know, and, and I'm like, oh, shut up. You know, and now this next morning, we're, we're leaving to go to Munich to this museum, okay? And I'm excited. I've waited my whole life. I'm going to see the drawer, okay? Shut your face. You know, we're not going to the emergency room. We're not doing anything else. She's freaking out. She wants to go find a hospital and all this stuff. I'm like, no. Okay, so I, I'm drinking coffee and I do all this stuff. And I know I have to drink it, just a little bit of tightness there, but nothing, nothing bad. Okay, so she wants to hurry up. We're getting dressed. We leave. Okay, we do, we do all this stuff. But I've got the sexy lips going on and I'm liking it. Okay, <laughs> so we get in the car. She wants me to take a Benadryl. And I don't want to take it because I know that it will make me sleepy. And I don't want to be asleep. I'm going to see the juror, okay? Good God, I'm not going to be asleep and see the juror, you know? I said, no, I'm not going to take that. My God, it'll make me sleep. So she's all nerved up and she's driving fast and stuff, you know? And we get there. Now, it's been two hours. And she's, we've already been the gamut in the car. Uh, at the medieval fair, did I brush up against some kind of a bush? Did I eat something? Blah, blah, blah. She's everything on the planet. You know, she's gone through and we've already talked about everything. No. Okay. So we get there and we go up and see the juror, you know, and uh, she's like, you know, can, are you okay? Can you breathe? Can you breathe? I'm like, fine. And when we get through looking at the museum, which, by the way, as a bonus, I saw a Da Vinci. I didn't even know it was there. So bonus, mark that off. How many Da Vinci's I've now seen? How fantastic is that? So, we go down into the little cafeteria that they have in this museum, and I ordered a quiche and a Coke. Now, I don't know if you know what a quiche is, but, you know, it's, it's egg, right? It's scrambled egg. Okay, so this should go down smooth. You know what I'm saying? You understand what I'm talking about? All right, when that finally comes, I took a bite of the quiche and swallowed it, and it was like rock and nails going down my throat. And my sister looked at me because she knew. And I looked at her, and I said, I'll take that Benadryl now. And so she gave me the Benadryl, and she was really upset with me. You know, but I, I have always said that I would die to get to see the juror. I literally almost did. <laughs> and when my dad found out what was happening, you know, he, she finally talked to him that night, because when we got to her house, the Benadryl and stuff knocked me out, and I went to sleep. We got to her house. He was so mad at me, and the next morning he got me on got me on the phone, and they got me on some prednisone, some steroids and stuff. But the Ben girl saved my life, no doubt. But he said, "Trisha, you idiot." He was so mad at me. You know, my dad's a doctor, and he said, uh, "You know, you were going into anaphylactic shock, and you could have died." And I said, uh, "Yeah, I got that part already." And uh, <laughs> I already got that part, and he said, what is wrong with you? And I said, well, I thought it was okay as long as I could breathe, you know, I, I could still breathe. And he said, yeah, by the time you couldn't breathe anymore, then the next step is you would have passed out, you know, and then there you are. And he said, no, anytime if your voice is, a cha if you have had a vocal change whatsoever, or your lips or any of that has swollen, you need to go immediately to the emergency room. And here, I stretched this out for like more than four hours, which don't tell them what time it actually started in the middle of the night. You know, who knows? But I woke up with these sexy and jolly <laughs> lips, which I really liked, and I was so pissed off when they went back down. But um, it really, really was pretty. If you didn't know me, you wouldn't have thought anything funny about it because they didn't look weird. They weren't red, and they didn't itch or anything like that. It was just like 
Well, Jamie, you are. <laughs> just that. My voice though was weird. It was just so weird. It was just kind of, you know, like, what the heck is that? You know, you know, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm a helium all the time. <laughs> it was just so bizarre. And the voice kept getting worse, so I knew I was in trouble. Yeah, uh, it was a medicine that I had started taking in the States before I even left, and I had taken it many times, so I never thought it was that at all. I had no, we had no idea what it was, but my dad told me that if I ever take it again, I'd probably die, because I had such a severe reaction. So I said, well, let's mark that off the list. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, you know, when you, when you say that you'll die to see something, you know, I almost actually did. So, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I didn't actually mean it, you know, I mean, I kind of meant it. Just kidding, just kidding. You know, I kind of meant it, but really not, have not really. <laughs> right, let's try to go through one more. Not really this thing, but I'll make it work there. Okay, this next guy is actually not from the Renaissance period. This is the man's name, Jacques-Louis Deby. But he is so good, he should have been Renaissance. And I gotta share him with you. I got to, got to. So I'm sticking him I'm in there. That runs in my family, Jacques-Louis. Jacques-Louis? It's you, in your family? Mm -hmm. Oh, cool, cool. So, yes, it's Jacques-Louis Deby. It is French. So if that's how it's pronounced, it is not Jacques Louis David. <laughs> <laughs> His nickname is John because that's what they call my my uncle. Yeah. American. His name is John Louis. His real name is John. John Louis. Okay. Yeah, we call him John. We don't John. really don't know how that's stuck. Okay. So I'll just call him the V a lot. I'll say the V. So this is the V, not David. Okay. This is French. We got to go with the French pronunciation. <laughs> the V. And that's what Divi looked like. Uh, the first thing we'll look at is called the Death of Socrates. Okay. <laughs> We're just going to try to mispronounce all of these things. So David made Socrates. <laughs> yeah. And this is also in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. So you can see a Drew paint, a Drew woodcut, and also a Divi painting while you're there. All right, I'm going. All right. There's no more questions. I'll just tell my mom. Mom, forget the, forget the Statue of Liberty, forget the Empire State Building. We're going to go to the Met. The Met, yes. I would love to go to the Met. I've, ne I've only been to the airport in New York a couple of times. I've never been actually in the city. I'd love to, though, because of the well, Met. Well, come on, so where are you going? Where are you just when? We're leaving March 19th and we're oh. going for 10 days. Are we May 19th? May 19th. May 19th. We're going to be gone for 10 days. Um, we're going up through Pennsylvania Amish country and we're going to Maine and Niagara Falls and then we get to go to New York State for That sounds fantastic. Yeah. It's going to be a great trip. I only $800. <laughs> All right, now here is the painting. Isn't that fantastic? Uh, opened up right to it. Say hello to First everybody. stage. And he is not saying hello, that is his defiant <coughs> finger. In defiance, he will drink the hemlock. What? He drinks the hemlock? Yes. Oh, yeah. I was willing to do it. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Bill Hanks. Don't do that to my mom. Oh, do you? Hello, mother. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's my dad. That's mine. Oh, no, I'm sorry. They're they're probably mad at me. <laughs> oh, my parents are hilarious. So yeah. I did it here. She's like, I can see that we have some hair. I was like, say hi. <laughs> my parents are. My dad was, will walk in the house and he'll flip me and throw me off. And I'm like, hey. And I was like, okay. I told him that, but doesn't he have to do it all the time? He's like, no. It's just so well. And he's like, why is it in the space for you telling me? Oh, good grief. Have you ever seen him just go with it? Or the first page? Yes, I have. With Adam Sandler and his wife. You know how he makes fun of the guy with the beard and he goes like this? He's talking to the guy with the beard. Yes, yes. My brother and my dad, my real dad, do not stop that. Anytime, anybody ever around, like, what are you talking about? I'm like, that's so stupid. Because one time Brett did it with his nose. Whoops. <laughs> well, I Um. So what we have here, obviously, is an allegory of figures around uh, Socrates as he is about to defiantly drink the hemlock, you know, 
And look at the sadness that we have in the room, this lamenting that's going on here with this group of people. This guy, he's about ready to tear his hair out, you know. Uh, and this person laying himself on the wall here, also the guy laying on the wall. This one here at the foot of the bed, just very sad and just giving up, you know. And this, the man who's actually handing the hemlock over to him, he, he just can't believe what's going on. And, you know, to remind ourselves that, that Socrates had a way out, he could leave Athens and live, but he chose not to. He said he wouldn't live with the barbarians, that if this is what his people chose for him, that this is what he would do. So in, in defiance, you know, he drinks the hemlock, and it's <coughs> the greatest martyr that democracy has ever known for democracy. And here the characters all around him. It's just fantastically done. You feel, you feel the emotion that the artist is trying to portray here of sorrow and loss. And yet in Socrates, the one of, you know, almost triumphant the fight. You can tell how you know? poor he was by how skinny he was. Mm -hmm. It looks like he probably just died of hunger. Yeah. Now he didn't have a lot of money. Face. Didn't have a lot of money. We go That's for sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, that's what I tell her. You can no longer tell me my boyfriend's warning because you have to teach his channel. And Reese didn't write that down, so I'm not going to write that down. Now, we are going to stop there because it takes 10 minutes for this to say for Jarrett, so I've got to stop here. But, like, Jarrett's children are brought because Chase is just so, like, So, everybody say bye to Jarrett. Bye, Jarrett! Bye, Jarrett! Bye, Jarrett. Bye. Bye.